live from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube covering ServiceNow Knowledge 17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're, we're back in Orlando. I'm Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Carrie Cullid Cullity is here. She's the Advisory Managing Director of Healthcare Solutions for KPMG. Carrie, good to see you. Good to see you. You're in, you're in Boston, center of a lot of healthcare action going on yeah, in Boston. Yeah, absolutely. And specialty. So give us the update. Tell, tell us about your role and, and the practice inside yeah, of KPMG. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you said, I work at KPMG as a Managing Director in Healthcare Solutions. I lead up our Enterprise Asset Management um, offering, our solution that uh, healthcare organizations are now starting to actually take a look at. Um, it's, you know, with all the mergers and acquisitions that have occurred in, in healthcare today, it's a good place for cost savings. And so we're seeing a lot of CFOs and other executive leadership really starting to take a look at their enterprise asset management strategy. So how do you organize enterprise assets in, in healthcare? Right? Hospitals are giant places, they got a ton of assets from expensive MRI machines to lots of rubber gloves and everything in between. Yeah, so it, it's a big task. I mean, it's something that organizations haven't thought about. So, it, you know, all these organizations are being asked to cut costs and it's a really good place to start because as, as you said, there's some really high t ticketed priced items such as MRI machines, IV pumps, and you know, also, so they look at it from a clinical perspective, um, which is really clinical engineering, and they also look at it from a facilities perspective, um, which is the safety of not only your patients, but also your customers as well. So they're really looking at it two different categories from a clinical and a facilities perspective. So, how does KPMG help these organizations? Maybe you could describe how they engage. With yeah, you. absolutely. Um, so one of the things that KPMG does is we come in and actually take a look at what their um, systems look like today, look at their current state, and look at where their future state wants to be. So really doing an assessment of their workflows, processes, people, and technology, um, and help them really put a roadmap in place to be successful in getting an enterprise management, uh, enterprise strategy in place. So when you do an assessment like that, is it uh, it's a big data collection exercise. You got to get the right constituents in the room. You heard all the cats. Uh, can you describe that? And yeah, some of the absolutely. There? So some of the challenges is that today is that they have multiple disparate systems across the organization. So they could have ten legacy systems that are not cloud based that aren't online, everything's very manually driven. So we go in and we conduct business um, analysis workflows with their certain teams. We start either in facilities or clinical depending upon where their biggest pain point is. Um, and then we, we actually gather all that data and information and understand where, where they're um, not in sync with each other because getting all of your folks at the same time, at the right time, um, thinking how do we standardize and consolidate across the organization is probably one of the biggest challenges that are, they have today. Now, how, how granular do you get in an assessment like that? I mean, it, it, it can be very granular. Sometimes we actually do um, physical inventory. So from a clinical perspective, especially if they had gone through mergers and acquisitions, they could have you know, 14 different facilities with 14 different pieces of equipment in it. So we can get down to the granular level of actually doing physical inventory accounts because a lot of times these leadership doesn't even know. They could have the same piece of equipment in 14 different places and they're paying duplicate maintenance contracts, which is really comes down to the vendor management aspect of it. So we can go as granular as the physical inventory all the way up to the putting together the entire strategy around, you know, the people, process, and technology. So how does ServiceNow fit? So ServiceNow, it, that's actually a great question. One of the things that organizations that have made the investment in, in ServiceNow is typically, especially in the healthcare setting, has made it um, in the IT space. And so this really allows them to leverage that investment and bring it out into other parts of their business, such as the clinical engineering, the facilities, and really you start to see that consolidated plat standardized and consolidated platform across the organization. So you work with your colleagues who have, this is obviously a ServiceNow practice, right? And, yeah. and then you sort of, hunt within those guys that have adopted, say for instance, ITSM, and then say, yeah. okay, hey, look what else we can do for you. Is yeah, right? so we're working with a lot of the vendors that actually have built the enterprise asset management software. ServiceNow actually has an enterprise um, asset, man uh, asset management solution as well. They've also, they partner with other organizations that look at it from a workflow, um, a whole entire work uh, life cycle uh, aspect of it. So we work very closely with our ServiceNow team because a lot of these organizations have built their ServiceNow platform and being able to take that and, and bring it into other parts of the business is it, it critical for success? So, KPMG obviously is independent, you know, you're agnostic to technology, you're not, 
You're not supposed to play favorites, but like John Donahoe said yesterday, <laughs> and, you know, my, my daughter's my favorite. <laughs> so, so, that was classic. Uh, it was good. <laughs> so how do you, now at the same time, of course, you know certain technologies fit a particular use case. They have their strategic fit. So where is the, where is the service now strategic fit? Yeah, so ServiceNow is in a lot of healthcare organizations today. When you know cloud became the big thing, um, they they are already in a lot of our customers. So what we do is we actually work with our ServiceNow um, counterparts, um, both from a ServiceNow perspective and also from a KPMG ServiceNow team, and understand what those roadmaps look and how do they s continue to mature the ServiceNow platform. Um, I would say 99% of the time, ServiceNow is is the platform of choice because it's so easy to use. I'm sure you've heard that quite a bit, yeah. um, and they can customize it to make it you know, fit for them. Um, so you know, a lot of times because of our partnership with, with ServiceNow, it just is, is a good fit for both the client and for us and for ServiceNow. So are you managing a global organization? Or uh, so I manage uh, in the US right now. Okay. Um, we, we have spoken to uh, you know, other large healthcare organizations. So what's happening now is that we're seeing our clients are really starting to look at, okay, how do we look at our enterprise asset management from a physical, contractual, help us make better enterprise-wide business decisions. And now we're actually starting to see that go into not only the the healthcare providers but also into the custom uh, the the um, clients that actually support them as well. Um, so we've worked with some large uh, in Germany. We were talking to them about how they can kind of start to play in this this whole uh, space as well. So just shifting gears a little bit, you know, healthcare always gets knocked for being laggards mm -hmm. on technology. But you know, we've had a couple people on the show the last couple of days that are involved in healthcare. I'm just kind of curious your perspective. You know, is is that a legitimate knock? Is that changing? If it is, and, and if if it is changing, kind of where do you see the opportunities for them to catch up, get ahead? Because it's such a big industry, it's such a big spend, so much facilities. I, I, I think we're seeing. I think we're seeing it shift a little bit. I think, you know. They have been a little bit slow for, as far as technology goes because there's been so many competing, competing projects such as regulatory issues. The whole, you know, now we're in the repeal and replace, so everyone's trying to figure out exactly what that means for them as an organization. We do see that shifting because it's becoming a very customer focused. The customer is driving, you know, whether it be the customer or the patient, it's dr they're driving a lot of these organizations to start saying, you know, we need technology because we need it's a very competitive market as you said, and we need them to stay within our organization. Um, or they're going to go elsewhere for the care. Um, and so we're actually seeing really us as consumers of healthcare really pushing them in that direction that they need to start looking at technology more seriously. So what's the vision? Where do you take this you know, mid-term, long-term? Yeah, I, I think the vision is, is that one, one first is, it gives them an opportunity, as we said, to leverage the investment that they've made in, in their current technology, such as ServiceNow, to bring it into other parts of their business. It also allows them to start really putting, you know, the, the challenges that they have and in, to make enterprise-wide business decisions as they move forward. I think you'll see them starting to look at, not only just from a facilities and clinical perspective, I think you'll start to see that really branch out into the entire continuum of care. Mm. How about, how about this show? I know you're, you're kind of doing it in and out, but have you had a chance to walk around, check it, out your it, booth? It's been amazing. It's, it's been great. It, it, it's amazing the amount of partners that ServiceNow has in their ecosystem. And uh, it's, I've learned a great deal. The keynotes have been fantastic. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what they do next year. I, I know that when they, last year it was 12,000 and this year it's up to 15,000. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's quite a growth. <laughs> Back to Vegas. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Bigger hallway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carrie, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. We appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Thanks Thank you for, for having me. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, buddy. Jeff and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break.